Hey guys, I had a bunch of these old lawnmower blades all rusted laying around the garage and so I decided to go ahead and make an axe out of one of them. So I cleaned it all up and I rough cut the axe out with the angle grinder and then uh, cleaned up the edges on the bench grinder and I got something like this. Got just a little bit more profiling left to do on the grinder here and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so the shape of the blade is done. As you can see here, I kind of drew the shape that I wanted in AutoCAD and printed it out. This one didn't come out to scale, but uh, this one did. Um, so these lines here, here, and there, those are the bevel lines. I'm going to actually bevel the top and bottom as well as the edge. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. But uh, that's how I got the shape that I wanted. And this little wing here, I had to cut that with a Dremel and a diamond cutting wheel because it was so precise and it was much too small for the angle grinder. So I got everything cut now. I had a little bit of difficulty drilling the holes. Even with my hardened steel uh, drill bit, it couldn't get through it, so I'm going to have to sharpen some bits and try to drill through it again. But for now, I'm going to start the bevel on here, on the top and the bottom and the edge. So what I need to do for that is color the edges uh, with a sharpie and then mark the center line using my calipers. So these are 0.2 inches thick, almost quarter inch, but not quite. So what I'm going to do is set the caliper at 0.1 inches and then uh, run it down the edge and make a scratch in the ink. And that's how I'll know where the center line is so that when I'm beveling it, I don't go too far or not far enough. So on the bottom here, I only want the bevel to go up to there, not all the way, so I'm going to start the marker where I want the bevel to start. So here you can see the scratch marks that I've made in the center of the edges. And so now I'm ready to start grinding the bevels. I'm going to start using the bench grinder and probably finish using a sander. Alright, so here's the axe head after grinding a couple bevels with the bench grinder. Show you both sides here. It's a little bit inconsistent, you can see there, so I'm going to file it out a little bit and try to flatten it. The bottom one here came out pretty good, so I'm only going to have to file it a little bit. As you can see, the bevel kind of tapers off as you get closer to the front edge, which I did on purpose because these bevels here aren't actually going to be sharpened or anything. Maybe I'll sharpen them, but they're not going to be functional, so it doesn't matter that the edge doesn't go all the way up to the top here. These are just purely aesthetic. So I'm going to file these and polish them up a little bit. Okay, so here we are with the blade, the axe head almost ready for heat treating. Uh, all the bevels are cut and uh, I filed them to make them a little bit smoother. Uh, here you can see on the edge it's not quite to a point and that is to keep it from warping when I uh, heat treat it. And the same goes for this edge. You can see that flat spot I ground out because this one actually came out to a point when I filed it. So I had to take the point off so it didn't get a wave in it. On this bottom edge, I didn't bother flattening it or taking the edge off because it's not too sharp. And I feel like if I took that edge off, if I flattened it before I heat treated it, then it would be pretty difficult to get it back after heat treating. So another thing, um, probably not gonna 
harden that part of the blade, I'm going to stick to hardening this edge and the back edge. I'm going to stay away from the middle, so I don't think it's really going to be a problem. I don't think it'll warp or anything like that. So the last thing I need to do is get these holes drilled before I harden it. Um, so I need to sharpen a couple of drill bits and see if I can finally get through there because this stuff is really, really hard. Okay, so a few things I've done since the last shot. Obviously I put the holes in. Um, and in order to do that I couldn't just drill through it the way it was. The metal was much too hard and way harder than I thought it was. So as you can see, uh, the color difference here, uh, what that is, is I saw a video by Bruce Cheney. He was making a, a bushcraft axe out of some old metal and it was really hard. So we, what he did was relax the metal a little bit by heating it up until it got kind of blue. There you can kind of see the color difference, a little bit blue. So that got the metal a little bit softer and then I was able to sharpen a cobalt drill bit and finally get through these two holes. And then in addition to that, I changed the flat back to a spike point because I thought one, that it would look better and two, already had a, a flat edge on the front so in terms of weapon qualities it would be better to have a spike on the back. and kind of change it up a little bit. I thought it looked good and now this can get nice and sharp and pointy. Uh, also I smoothed up this curve just a little bit with a Dremel and uh, made it a little bit less flat on the edge because I'm not going to end up heat treating this part of the blade or this part. I'm only going to heat treat the ends so there was no point in keeping these flat. So I sharpened them just a little bit more and after all that we are finally ready to heat treat it so let's go and do that now. So that right there is the Ghetto Forge 9000, as I like to call it. Some cinder blocks, and I uh, got some charcoal burning in the top hole there. There's a little air inlet on the bottom on this side, so that I can use my blower and blow some oxygen into there, get the fire hotter, and get the metal up to cherry red. So. Once the coal burns a little bit better, burns for a little bit longer, I'm going to start heat treating the spike again because the propane torch wasn't quite hot enough, so it, it would be nowhere near hot enough to do the bigger side. So I got this going, I got my oil ready, and I got a little tool that I'm going to use to suspend it over the fire, and uh, let's, get, let's get to it. scratched all the slag, I guess, or all the stuff on the outside from the coals with a wire brush, and I can test the hardness. 
don't think I got a very good hardening on this side. The file doesn't seem to be scratching a little bit, so who cares. But on the back one here, I think I got actually a pretty good harden on it. That's cool. Um, so the oven is preheating to 425 degrees, and I'll cook it in there for an hour. Not really sure what kind of steel this is anyway, so there's no exact science to this. I don't know if the steel could even be hardened in the fire and quench method. So we'll see. I'm going to bake it in the oven now and clean it up after that and see what she looks like. Chill, man. 420 blaze it. Okay, here we are after tempering. You can kind of see the straw color going on over here on the front. That's what we're looking for after tempering. So now I'm going to try to polish this up and make the axe head shiny like it was before. Got to kind of get all this this crap off the side. It's pretty stuck on there, so I'm going to see what I can do. Okay, so here it is all polished up. Basically used um, a belt sander with some 120 on the sides. Take all the crud off and then work my way up with some pieces of sandpaper by hand. And came out pretty shiny as you can see. Now what I'm going to do is start to put the edge on this part of the blade. and start with a file and then I'm going to use a whetstone to get it nice and sharp. Alright, so I've sharpened it. Here's what it looks like. I didn't put too much of an edge on it because if I'm chopping wood or cutting anything harder than, you know, paper and soft things like that, then a really sharp edge would probably come off. So I left the edge sharp but not razor sharp so that it would last a little bit longer. Pretty shiny, I would say. Uh, not a mirror polish by any means, but I don't have the sandpaper to go up that high. So the last thing to do is attach a handle. Not sure what I'm going to use yet, but I definitely want it to be metal and not wood. Because this is a rather tactical looking axe, I would say, and I just don't think it would be fitting to have a wooden handle on it. It wouldn't look good. So I'm going to try to get a metal handle.